We're gonna do one more exercise using only grayscale. We're going to paint colored objects that have their own base value, and we're going to analyze the value structure in that colored scene, and we're gonna paint it in grayscale. Next week, we're gonna move on to color. But this is one more exercise, again, really important. So don't skip on by it. Get your still life set up. Find three or four objects that are of distinct value range. So something dark, something light, something in the middle. I have my still life set up. I've toned my canvas. I've sketched it out. I'm ready to paint. This is what we're gonna look at in this setup. We have three very distinct values here. The cherries are the darkest thing in this setup. The lime is slightly lighter than the cherries and the pear is slightly lighter than the lime, which means when you break it down, the shadows in the cherry are gonna be darker than the shadows in the lime. The shadows in the lime are gonna be darker than the shadows in the pear. The light in the pear is going to be lighter than the light in the lime. Because in its base structure with no light, turn the light off, this is lighter than this, and this is lighter than this. That's how we hold the value structure together. So let's begin. I have my setup. I'm gonna find my darkest dart. It's going to be in my darkest object, which are my cherries, and it's gonna be in the shadow part of my cherries. So I'm picking my darkest value on the palette, and I'm going into the shadow areas of my cherries. Right. The cherries are the darkest thing in my setup. So I've used my darkest color to create the shadow of the cherries. The lime is the next darkest object. It's slightly lighter. So the value of the lime, the shadow in the lime cannot be as dark as the shadow in the cherry because the lime is not as dark as the cherry. So I went down one step. I have the next value on my brush. I'm gonna paint the shadow of the lime. It's not quite as dark as the shadow of my cherries. And then I'm going to go into my pear, which is lighter than my lime. So the shadow in my pear cannot be as dark as the shadow in my lime. So I have the shadow in my lime. Now I'm going to put the shadow in my pear, which cannot be as dark as the shadow in my lime. So I'm stepping down one value. I'm loading my brush, I'm gonna put this shadow area into the pear. What is the shape? What is the value shape of that shadow? Somewhere in there. Okay, now let's paint our light. The light in the pear, because the pear is lighter than the lime, the light in the pear has to be lighter than the light in the lime. So I'm gonna go with this value for the light in the pear, and I'm gonna paint my light. This is, as I see it, the shape of the light in the pear. Now the lime, is slightly darker than the pear. So the light that is in the lime has to be slightly darker than the light that is in the pear. I'm gonna add my light to the lime. And now I'm gonna add my light to the cherries. The cherries are darker than the lime, so the light in the cherries has to be darker than the light in the lime. So I'm gonna go in here. This might be a hair too dark. I can, I can mix something kind of in between there. I'm gonna put the light 
and the cherries. The cloth that the whole scene is sitting on is white. It is the lightest object there. It's also receiving the most light. So I'm gonna take my whitest white, my whitest white, and I'm going to describe that. I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna paint in the area where my cast shadows are because those cast shadows are going to describe the form of the object that is casting the shadow. Cast shadows are beautiful. They're beautiful to paint. That big one coming off that line. It goes around here, it catches the, see the line goes around. The cast shadow from the pear kind of comes off the top of the line, comes around, goes back in, describes the curve of the pear. The light goes around the pear. You see the light in the pear is not as light as the light in the background because the pear is darker than the background. Okay, now I'm gonna paint my cast shadow. My cast shadows, my cast shadows from the subject are still on a white background and the white background is lighter than any of the objects there. So I want something that's darker than the light, but it, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to always be as dark as it appears to be in there. So I'm going to go somewhere in here. add my cast shadow. I'm going to add the stem of the cherry here. And the stem. There's, a, there's an area in a cast shadow, the contact, where the, where the objects contact the base, and there's really hardly any light in there. So they tend to be, they tend to be a little bit darker. Right where they make contact. And then as shadows get out to the edge, they get a little bit fuzzier. Their lines aren't quite as solid. They're strong. You know, when you're up right where this the shadow comes off the line, it's a very sharp, it's, it's a sharper edge. But then as it moves away, it gets a little less defined. Cherry. It's too dark. See what I did there? It's too dark. Wipe it out, as is the beauty of paint, and put it back in there. Didn't clean my brush. Pull the Meryl Spirits out of my brush, get clean paint, and cut back into that shape.
that's, that is basic enough for this exercise. What you really want to, what I want you to recognize in here is the value difference between the pear and the lime and the cherries. The light in the pear is going to be lighter than the light in the lime. The light in the lime is going to be lighter than the light in the cherries. Slightly darker in here where it actually touches. The cherries are a very reflective uh, surface. They're shiny, they're bright, so they're going to reflect the light source. about it. So that's the exercise. Do this with a couple different objects. Do this three or four times. These are exercises that are going to make your painting really strong. You'll really start to see and recognize what's in light, what's in shadow, what is the base value of that object. Is the light in this object brighter than the light in this object? Is the shadow in this object darker than the shadow in this object? Your eyes will start to just see it without even really thinking about it. So do this four or five times. Set up a little still life, compose it on your canvas, describe what is in light and what is in shadow, and use only values to do it. And then next week when we sail into color, you'll be a master.